can't see you all, but I saw the group outside, and <clears throat> it's obvious why I was invited to speak today. The organizers had to think of some way of bringing up the average age of the speakers. <laughs> I, I thank you for this privilege. Having lived through almost a whole century, I've wondered about what I learned that might be an idea worth sharing with you. I made choices, sometime hard or unusual choices, but this is what, me, what we all must do in order to live an interesting, fulfilling, and worthwhile life. As our president said so eloquently in his inaugural address, as times change, so must we. As I began to see signs of change in 1957, I made a choice. I decided to go to work. No married woman in my family or among my large circle of friends had gone out of their home to work. I had been a typical housewife and mother. My conversation at the dinner table generally consisted of something as stimulating as, would you like me to pass the butter? The Department of Welfare was hiring college graduates to be social workers. So I went there for my first interview. Ms. Keenot told me of a possible job in public assistance. And without a drop of embarrassment, I asked if I could use her phone. Then in front of this total stranger, I called my husband at his office. I described the job which had been offered to me. He said he didn't think that would be an appropriate job for me. I told the woman who was, in, who was interviewing me that my husband didn't think that this was the right job for me. She seemed to accept that as a reasonable answer and asked me to come back the next day. At that time, she offered me a job as a receptionist. Again, I asked her to use her phone. And again, I called my husband, who said he couldn't imagine that that was what I wanted to do. I told Ms. Keenot, and she politely asked me to return the next day. At that time, she said there was a new opening in the adoption division and wondered if I would like to use her phone to call my husband. <laughs> No, I said, I felt this was the right job for me, and I didn't want to call my husband. And so I made my choice. I placed babies for adoption and screened new families for 10 years. Once a child was placed, the records were closed and sealed. My interest in adoption has never waned, and many years after I left the department, I was instrumental in putting together an adoption conference for all members of the adoption triad to attend workshops dealing with the different aspects of adoption. This, this time was just the beginning of what we called open records. And at the conference, exactly one birth mother attended. There was a hush among the 150 attendees as this brave birth mother who came with her daughter, who she had given up 20 years before, told of their reunion. The birth mother was a music teacher. The daughter played the flute pro professionally. The daughter had always wondered where her musical talent had come from. Now she knew. But there was still a great deal of secrecy and questioning about the new idea of allowing adopted people to learn more about their roots from their own biological parents. Fast forward. It's now 2013. Last week, I had a dinner party at my apartment. The guest list consisted of my stepson, my stepson's husband, and their two biological daughters, ages nine and seven. The girl's biological mother, Mary, was also at my table. 
Mary had given up a son for adoption 13 years ago. This boy was also one of my guests, along with a family who had adopted him, as well as their own biological daughter. I know that's a lot of a dinner party to get <laughs> straight. <but. laughs> it was a happy group of 10 who certainly couldn't have gathered to dine together in the days of the 50s or 60s when I was placing babies and promising the biological mothers as well as the adoptive families complete secrecy. How much healthier these new relationships are for everyone in this triad today. The civil rights movement, which morphed into so many other rights, women's rights, gay rights, adoptees' rights, and the rights of all people of color. These were the great political movements in my lifetime, which allowed me to make the choices which I have made. <clears throat> this is what allowed me and so many other women to find our own voices. No more stopping at, would you like me to pass the butter? I had worked at the Department of Welfare for 10 years before seeing a column in the Baltimore Sun saying that Hopkins planned to train housewives to become psychotherapists. I applied, as did 400 other housewives. I think I have to um, lean on something or maybe, I don't know. Do we have a chair? My legs suddenly got funny. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, I saw this column in the Baltimore Sun saying that Hopkins planned to train housewives to become psychotherapists. I applied, as did 400 other housewives. To apply, you had to be 35 years or older and have no degree beyond a college degree and to be what you considered happily married. And, and to have raised a family. Eight of us were selected after, after a few months of rigorous screening. From the first day of classes and throughout the 16 years that Hopkins trained candidates, the program was known as the Housewives Program. On our first day, one of the selectees said her husband had told her that he would leave her if she accepted the radical idea of becoming a psychotherapist. He left that very day and did not return. The divorce rate continued to be high throughout the years of the program. Many husbands felt their wives had broken their marriage contract by going out into what was a new frontier and one that the husbands hadn't bargained for. I had made my choice and fortunately for me, <clears throat> my husband liked the new spark he saw. After the training and internship, a new clinic was started at Hopkins called <clears throat> the Sexual Behaviors Consultation Unit. I chose to apply to become a member of the staff and have been with that clinic for 40, 42 years now. <laughs> From PTA president to sex therapist. <laughs> that was quite a choice to make at that time. Our first patients in the 70s were often men and women who were concerned about their sexual orientation, wondering if we could fix their attraction to members of their same sex. This week, our president talked at his inauguration of rights for all gay people Indeed, how times have changed. In our work with couples, uh, in our work with couples, women were beginning to learn of their own sexual rights. Some partners couldn't deal with these demands, and we had a rash of men who felt inadequate as sexual partners sometime becoming impotent 
as they tried to get used to the idea of women expecting more sexual pleasure. Today, the chief complaints have changed. We see many transgender people, young and old, but definitely much younger than in the earlier years of the clinic. And we see marriages affected by overdoses of internet pornography. Yes, in the area of sexuality, as you would imagine, we've seen vast changes. As the civil rights movement influenced the rights of African Americans, black children saw the merry-go-round at Gwyn Oak Park but were not allowed to enter the park to partake of the fun. They wanted to reach for the brass ring, just like the other children were doing. Along with many others, my family and I helped to integrate Gwyn Oak Park so that now all children could go on the exciting merry-go-round. I have learned that new ideas don't come all neatly wrapped and labeled in packages. I learned that you have to turn the package over, look at it from every angle, and choose the one that appeals to you. I did this, and now, at the end of the day, I can say that I have seen many changes, have chosen to run with some of them, and I have had an ordinary and yet an extraordinary life. I'm still seeing a few clients but regrettably, I get few new ones. My referral sources don't seem to think they should send me any long-term clients. <laughs> oh dear. Yet, it's been fun and gratifying to go around on life's merry-go-round and grab for the brass ring. And hopefully along the way, I've helped the lives of my fellow men. Thank you. Now I, I have a my legs began to shake. <laughs>